Hello, I'm Dr. Christy Winters, International Co-Investigator for the Qualitative Election Study of Britain. In this video, I'd like to introduce you to the study and give you a brief overview of what our research aims are and how we intend to achieve them. The first question to be answered is, why do a qualitative election study? And we point to the findings from the 2010 Qualitative Election Study of Britain that demonstrated the set responses used in election surveys are unable to capture the complexities of why people vote the way they do. Whereas quantitative research seeks to identify, isolate, and measure the causal processes in political behavior, qualitative research is ideal for investigating people's perceptions of meaning, how they relate to political actors, their states of mind, and their own understanding of the issues. For this grant proposal, we proposed leading a team of experts who would help us create the data that would be the most powerful and relevant and useful to the overall political science community. We want to produce data that directly answers research questions, has wide research and policy relevance, and will produce a significant amount of impact. To connect our research to those outside of academia, we've also created project partnerships with the private and public sector. So we are working with the Electoral Commission on issues of voting. We're also working on the quality of voting with the Electoral Reform Society. We are working with QSR, the private company and makers of Envivo, the qualitative analysis software. We are partnering with the UK Data Archive to create longitudinal metadata in order to encourage secondary reuse of our data. And we're partnering with Ipsos Mori to create parallel qualitative research projects and promote qualitative election study research in general. Our study and design includes 13 pre-election focus groups of between six and 10 people. We have three groups that will be watching the debates and then we can, the rest, the other 10 will be normal focus groups that will run about 90 minutes in length. Our study design also calls for five to seven post-election focus groups of eight to 10 people. And we're going to be recruiting with university internal communications, press releases to the local media, tweeting at local media and other potentially interested parties, and in-person recruitment. Since it's not the aim of qualitative research to be generalizable, what we want instead are to get uh, participants that are broadly representative of the population in terms of sex distribution, age distribution, and employment, these kinds of demographics. With the Qualitative Election Study of Britain 2015, what we've decided to do is really create one overarching theoretical question that helps guide the entire project. And that project question is, what are the constituency level constraints that voters find themselves within? For this reason, the constituencies for our focus group have been chosen based on their constituency level partisan dynamics. We've selected safe seats, two-way and three-way marginals, as well as a few open seats. We also tried to get a good variety of party matchups, so Conservative versus Labour, Labour versus Lib Dem, Lib Dem versus SNP, again in order to get a good spread of the kinds of dynamics people are operating within when they're making their vote choice calculations. We are very pleased to have had a group of experts who have agreed to advise us, uh, to provide us with local insight, to make sure that our questions are going to provide the kind of data that's going to be useful for them in their publications. And we're very thankful for all of the help for our advisory board members. In addition to the expertise that our advisory board members are providing us in the pre-election, they're also providing us their expertise in our post-election focus groups. Following on from the 2010 study, we're going to be collecting data in multiple formats. We have video and audio recordings. Those are going to be transcribed and anonymized, and it's also our aim to provide in vivo ready versions of the transcripts in order to make it easier and also more systematized uh, across uh, in vivo users so that they're all working with the same data prepared in the same way. The anonymized transcripts, which I've also removed any confidential or identifying information from them, will be published on the study's website as well as deposited with the UK Data Archive. Collecting the data is not enough. Um, obviously the point of data is to produce findings and reports and results. And so in conjunction with our advisory board members, we've identified a list of the publications that we plan to bring out based on our qualitative data.
in addition to providing the data for the 2015 election, we now can combine the data from the 2010 and the 2005 qualitative research to create the world's first longitudinal qualitative election study. We will do this by working in conjunction with the UK Data Archive to create a metadata structure that will thematize the transcripts according to theoretical and demographic characteristics. And that way people will be able to find information easily. So if you wanted to look at labor women under the age of 50 who were undecided in a pre-election on how they were going to vote, but voted labor in the post-election, you would be able to use our metadata structure to identify precisely those individuals and the texts within the data set. And in our round of data collection in 2015, we're not only collection, collecting for this particular election, but we're also looking to lay the groundwork to do more research in 2016. And so to that end, we're asking questions now about vote choice calculations on the local council, on the assembly or parliament level, as well as on the Westminster level, to set up the groundwork for a 2016 grant application that will study the elections of the Scottish Parliament and Welsh Assembly. To keep up with what we're doing on the Qualitative Election Study of Britain, you can either follow our blog, which the address will be on the screen. We also have a Facebook page, and we are on Twitter. Thank you for your time. I hope you found this interesting. And if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments. Thank you very much.